Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be creating swatches and giving you my first impressions of the Daniel Smith 238 colour extra fine watercolour dot card. The pack contains a total of four sheets with a small sample of each paint colour within the Daniel Smith watercolour range. Each colour is labelled with its name and series number. The dot card also provides information about each of the colours, such as its light fastness, level of staining, transparency, and whether it's a granulating colour or not. Granulating colours will give different effects as the paint dries, so this could look like a shift in the colour or like a texture develops. This information is very useful to have, so the dot card is really useful to hang on to even after you've used it to test the colours and decide which ones you like. To create my swatches, I made a grid for myself on watercolour paper. Because there are so many colours to try and I wanted to make decent sized swatches, I needed to use four A4 pages of watercolour paper to create my grid. As I swatched, I worked down the chart from top to bottom, but across my paper from left to right, and you'll see this later when I start the swatching. When you first get your dot card, it will be wrapped in plastic to protect it, and there is a small set of instructions that explains in different languages how to use the card. Once you open it up, you'll notice the paints are laid out in a rough colour order from the yellows, oranges and reds on the first page through the blues and greens to earthy tones and then finishing on the blacks, whites and special colours such as the duochromes. One colour has been discontinued and this was marked with a sticker which meant that there were 237 colours in total. I did make a couple of mistakes when writing out my chart, but since it's just a swatch chart, I decided to use some white ink to fix the mistakes, and I can still read all the names absolutely fine. For paper, I used this one from Fabriano, which is a slightly lower quality than what I would normally use to paint on. It's 25% cotton hot pressed paper and it's 200 GSM. I normally paint on the higher quality Fabriano paper, which is 300 GSM and 100% cotton. But for creating swatches, Although I wanted to use decent quality paper, I didn't want to feel like I was wasting my highest quality just to test colours. I chose hot press because I usually paint on smooth paper and I also wanted to see the full effect of the paint by itself without any added paper texture. I paid around 28 Australian dollars for this stock card. Prices will be different from one country to another and depending on what store you buy your products from. They give you a fairly decent sized amount of each colour, so there was still plenty left after I finished the video and you could use the samples to do a few small paintings if you wanted. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of brands that offer dot cards. But if you can find one, then it's really useful because it will let you test out the colours and see for yourself which ones suit your needs before you commit to buying the full size tubes. If you can't find a sample card for a brand that you want to try, or if you feel like you can't afford to buy one, then I would suggest looking around for as much information as you can find online. Read some reviews or watch video reviews and try to find other people's swatches to see what their results look like before buying. Because it can be hard to tell from a single picture or the colour that's marked on a tube what the paint will actually look like when it's applied to the paper. So when it comes to the full range of products, Daniel Smith watercolours are available in two sizes of tubes. They have the 5ml size and the 15ml, 
Plus they have some colours available as watercolour sticks, which are a fairly new thing. Earlier I mentioned that each of the colours has a series marked next to its name. And if you don't already know, paints vary in price according to the series. A Series 1 paint is the cheapest, and as you work up the numbers they get gradually more expensive. This is because the higher series paints use more expensive pigments. I believe there are 5 series of Daniel Smith watercolours at the moment, and just to give you an idea of why the paints can be so expensive, Daniel Smith does a Series 5 watercolour called Lapis Lazuli Genuine which, as it says in the name, contains genuine lapis lazuli gemstone as the pigment. It wasn't actually one of my favourite colours, and it's important to note that just because something is expensive doesn't mean that it will be the best colour that you can pick. There might be a series 1 or 2 colour that suits your style of painting much better than one of the higher series paints with the rarer pigments. So don't be tempted to buy something just because it's expensive or rare if it doesn't actually work with the kind of painting that you produce. The last page of the dot card looks quite uninteresting when you first swatch it, because it's what I would call the special effects paints. When you see these sitting flat on the paper, they can look quite boring, but as you move the paper around in the light, you will notice the real effect of the paints. I find this quite difficult to capture on camera, particularly since the swatches were on white paper. These would be good paints for applying as the top layer of a painting, especially if you're doing something like a mermaid for example and you want to add some shimmer to the scales of her tail. So I thought that I would just show you some close-ups of how my swatches turned out in case any of you are here because you're looking for information about what the Daniel Smith colours look like and tell you which ones were my favourites and which ones I didn't like so much. Some of the colours seem to swatch better than others. The yellows, oranges and reds mostly swatched very smoothly but the greens and earthy tones had a lot more colours that applied in a patchy way. This might have been partly due to the way that I applied the paint, maybe my brush was a little bit on the small side. It could also have been partly due to the paper that I used, since it was a slightly lower quality than what I would normally choose to work on for actual paintings. One thing that you can do is to use a slightly less expensive paper to try out the full range of colours, and then once you narrow down the possibilities for what you think you're interested in buying, then you can test a more limited range on a smaller piece of the paper that you would normally paint on. Here you can see some of the effects of the special effect paints. These are the duochrome, interference, pearlescent and iridescent paints which change colour as the light moves on them. The hardest one to capture is the pearlescent shimmer, because it's like tiny specks of glitter that you can only see when the light hits it in the right way. I think you can see it a little bit in a later clip. I loved a lot of the oranges, especially this very vibrant pearl orange, and they seem to swatch very well. Mayan yellow and Naples yellow I found didn't apply quite as smoothly, so I didn't like them quite as much. Potter's pink was one colour that I didn't like at all. I find it difficult to apply, and I just don't like the granulation effect of it. The quinacridone colours, on the other hand, were all lovely. Ultramarine red is very washed out, even after two layers, and the cobalts to the left of it also needed built up, but they looked okay after they dried. 
The bottom row, however, was all beautiful, and I think that I would happily use any of these colours. There are a lot of gorgeous reds. Again, I particularly liked the quinacridone colours, and I also love the Mayan orange and pearl scarlet. You can see the lapis lazuli here in the top left corner. I was a bit underwhelmed by it, and by the smalt genuine next to it. For blues, I was mostly impressed by the ultramarines and thalos, as well as the amazonite in the bottom right hand corner. Here I was particularly unimpressed with the cobalt green pale in the top right hand corner, which applied in a very patchy way. I absolutely loved the green golds and the quinacridone golds, including the quinacridone deep gold here. There are some really nice and unusual earthy tones, as well as a range of different greys and blacks, including a granulating lunar black. There really are too many of the special effect type paints that I loved to list individually, so I'll just attempt to show the effects again. So that's the end of the video. As always, I hope that you enjoyed it and find it useful. If you did, then I'd really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more videos like this, then I'd love it if you subscribed to my channel. Leave me a comment below and let me know which are your favourite colours from the Daniel Smith range. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye everyone!